Have you ever found yourself thinking, I'm just keeping everything together so there's, there's no way I'm depressed, right? But what if I told you that's exactly how high-functioning depression sneaks up on us? I'm clinical psychologist Dr. Patrick Kingsep, and today we're going to be uncovering the truth behind this invisible battle and explore what to do if you're the one who's facing it. I wake up and I think again, really? I have to do this again? I'm just so bored. I think we can all relate to that. Now the term high functioning depression is pretty popular these days, but in the psychology world, we know it as persistent depressant disorder or PDD for short. Now you might also have encountered the term dysimia, which is just the the old school way of saying the same thing. It's the same condition, just with a, like a fresh label. It's not the can't get out of bed or shutting out the world kind of situation. It's more like this ongoing feeling that things feel harder than they should. Yo, it's after five, you trying to set some sort of record? You're not still sleeping, get up. Now, someone I saw for therapy recently described it as, it's like I'm doing life like everyone else, getting up and getting things done. But I feel like there's this heavy load on my back that no one else can see. It's just so draining. Wow. I can't believe this. How have you been? I've been fine. Good, good. Now, let's peel back the curtain and talk about the seven signs of high functioning depression you just might be missing. Now one of the first things to look for is this, this constant self-doubt and just being highly critical about yourself. Now I'm sure you've had a time when you, you finished a project at work and did a pretty good job. There's nothing wrong with it. But as the day went on, it just kept kind of chewing away at your mind. Was it actually good enough? Did I put enough effort into it? Could I have done a better job? And this happens to most of us at one time or another. But if it's happening frequently, this could be something to look out for. I'm falling. I can't even finish my article. Maybe Noah's right. It's all scribble. I don't really have anything original to say. Writing can't save me. Even Harvard can't save me. How can I escape from the demons in my head? Next is the feeling that you have no energy in your reserve tank. You know when you wake up and feel like it's just, it's just all too much. You might still get up with your alarm, go on in your morning or go to the gym, but it's done with a huge struggle, mentally and physically. You might be knocking back a few coffees when you get to work but they're no longer giving you that buzz. What? You haven't peaked yet? Peaked? Yeah, peaked. I don't know, there's still some stuff in the basement. And it might just seem that you don't get the same enjoyment from things you once did. So, like say you're watching an NHL game with the Calgary Flames playing against the LA Kings, and it's halftime. Excitement is at its peak as the game is close. Usually, you'd be on the, the edge of your seat, but you're just not super into it. And maybe you should be, but you don't feel like doing anything else either. You're just kind of watching it. Maybe you're feeling more irritable lately. That's something to look out for as well. Heightened irritability can sometimes happen, but overall you feel things are getting under your skin, like someone just cutting you off on your way to work. And it's not just annoying, it's much heavier than that. It seems like everyone's getting on your nerves and you're pretty close to just 
you know, picking a fight with some random person. You might feel like you're going to explode if just one more person gets in your way and annoys you. And also be aware of withdrawing. It's not that you're avoiding people on purpose. You might just still show up to things, but you want to just fade into the background. Being around people feels like a chore. You're smiling and you're nodding, but inside you're just counting down the minutes until you get out of there. I went to look for you and you weren't there. You're working in the garden. I didn't wish to disturb you. You disturbed me when you disappear. I didn't disappear. Everywhere, I am attended by doctors who inform me of my own interests. They know your interests. They do not. They do not speak for my interests. And decision making is just so much harder. Have you ever noticed that you're choosing a show on Netflix and it just feels like it's a, it's like a major decision. The endless scrolling is not because you're picky. It's like your brain is, is overloaded. It's, it's frozen. And just choosing something is just overwhelming. You look lost. I do? Where are you headed? Well, I was just about to figure that out. And lastly, let's not overlook sleep. You're in bed on time, but your mind's racing with the thoughts about the day, or worse, you're, you're concerned about the tomorrows. Or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and just can't get back to sleep. I'm so depressed. Maybe if I took two more aspirin, it would help. Now, these signs are like like puzzle pieces. Individually, they might not mean much, but put them together and they start to form a picture. So what steps can you take if you're nodding and thinking, yep, that definitely sounds like me. Or maybe this sounds like someone you know. Now these are the five steps that I discuss with people in my private practice. I think finding someone you trust to talk to can make all the difference. Someone you can be honest with, who won't try to just fix things with a quick throwaway remark. This isn't about having lots of friends. It's about having real ones. Those who can be with you, no questions asked. When you're wading through those, those tough times and jotting down your thoughts in a journal or using apps to track your mood and symptoms can help you spot the patterns or the triggers of your moods. This way you're not guessing, you've got clear evidence of how you've been feeling and why. And this is a bit of a sensitive one, but cutting back on alcohol and stimulants is another smart move. It's easy to think that these quick fixes are giving you a pick-me-up, but the truth is that they can make depression symptoms harder in the long run. It's like a boomerang effect. What goes up must come down, and it often comes down much harder. Creating a structured routine can also be a lifeline when depression makes everything feel just chaotic. Sounds simple, but setting regular times for, for eating and for exercising and going to sleep gives you a sense of control and predictability. I gotta get organized. You know, little things like my apartment, my possessions. I should get one of those signs that says one of these days I'm gonna get organized. You mean organized? And lastly, don't forget you can access professional help. Therapy isn't just for the crises. It can be a space to learn more about yourself and find ways to manage your symptoms. Look into my eyes. Get out, Wills. I don't need therapy. That's enough. Get out. Ah. What do you want to do? Well, there is someone. Who is he? He used to be my, um, my roommate in college. Trust. Very important. 
in a relationship. It's also very important in a clinical situation. Why is trust the most important thing in making a breakthrough with a client? It's like high functioning depression has this way of, of like sliding under the radar, masked by a day's work well done, or just the simple act of getting out of bed and facing the day, no matter how heavy it feels. Now, if this helps even one person feel seen and start seeking the support they need, we're moving in the right direction. Remember that just because someone is powering through their day doesn't mean they're not carrying a heavy load.